Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hey guys, Toxie here. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my secrets, tips, tricks, and intricacies for the much requested, widely anticipated Hand of Justice solo boost guide. This is phase six, where the loot table changes from Anger Forge to the Emperor. Now, just as a little disclaimer, this is not a statistics or goal making guide. You can actually check out my previous Hand of Justice video where we speedrun it and delve into how much gold I make per hour. It's a really good video and I recommend you watch it. With that being said, this is simply a solo boost guide from my previous experiences, which will in turn hopefully help you guys to formulate and craft your own amazing Hand of Justice solo boost run. So, just a little bit of background before we get into the guide, I've been running this for around 7 months now and I remember when I first started, I was in full fresh level 60 green gear and I used to run with a druid called Zaif, shout out to Zaif, <laughs> and we used to run this 2 man and try to beat our speeds each time. I think we got down to 11 minutes which was super super quick considering that we was in such low gear, however now we are both full busy it would be a complete different story. To you guys who are watching now, you'll actually be able to see that this is so lowable by any class and you can actually boost any class. It's not so much the gear that's important here, it's making sure that your resistances are in check and that you are using the correct strategy and consumables. So with that being said, we will do the gear check now. Okay kings and queens, so for this boost I like to run a full lifesteal build which basically consists of 8 out of 8 bloodfang for the amazing 8 piece set bonus that it gives. It basically steals 317 life from your opponent and returns it back to you over the course of 6 seconds. Now with the full bloodfang set you're also going to get a lot of stamina and fire resistance which is super super nice for this run. Now for the trinket I am using Dark Moon Card Heroism which is another form of lifesteal. For the enchants I am running lifestealing, however Crusader is also a super viable option as it gives you a small lifesteal and 100 attack power in the process. I do feel though that lifestealing life stealing is a bit of a more viable option as it procs around 6 times per minute as opposed to Crusaders 1 time per minute. But again guys, it's completely up to you. Now with the neck piece I am using a Nixia Tooth Pendant which gives you stamina and fire resistance. With the cloak I am using Dragon's Blood Cape which gives you armor, stamina and fire resistance. And with the offhand I am using Widow's Remorse which gives you armor and a big chunk of stamina. Now usually I would just burst through this with full T3 pumper mode, however with this life stealing build I feel it is a much better representation for the general populace as attaining full T3 is quite difficult and time consuming. However if your gear is not even like this, don't worry, just stack some stamina, get some fire resistance and try to get some life stealing enchants and items because it's basically the consumables and the system of the boost which is really going to push you through this. Now I want to add that. Greater fire protection potions are necessary, free action potions are necessary, stamina zanza is necessary and flask of the titans is optional depending on your gear but we will get into that later. I will also leave a spec for the fellow rogues in the chat who want to see what spec I'm running and try to formulate you know some ideas and own spec via that. But guys also please note that this is a rogue run so if you are maining a mage or a warrior or priest or a druid, whatever you're running, try to just watch my run and learn the tips and tricks that I am showing you and the systems and the methods of the boost and you're going to have to incorporate it into your own class. So with that being said, we will now get into the run. Okay guys, so we're going to start by opening the first door and then immediately popping sprint onto the second door. In doing so, we'll allow for faster run times. Also, if you pop sprint at the first door, it will enable you to run onto the third door. Also, just to add, if you do this sprint, sprint process on a fresh reset, you will actually be allowed to avoid the first lava spawn that you encounter. However, this is not such a big deal as they have a low aggro range. But just to add also, the fire elementals here do have a fire guard aura. So if you are stealth near them, they can get you out of stealth. Now here, there are a million and one ways through. As you can see, I use a blind gouge method simply for theatrical purposes, uh, however you can just simply stick to the wall and run through, the mobs to the right hand side will never usually aggro, any forms of CC will do there, Nova, Earthbind, just yeah, just run through and you will never have really any issues, just be careful not to fall down as you jump. Now here at this point, each lava spawn on each side will not aggro until the last two, 
unless you are around level 56, 7 or 8, these two here may aggro, so just keep an eye out for that. Now at this point, what you want to do is, you want to jump down to the left. I like to throw a little gouge here, just as, I don't know, just as like a safety measure. Maybe to take a little bit of the aggro, protect the person you are boosting. Now, once you are down here, you will take a little bit of fire damage, regardless at how pog your jumping skills are. This is just simply to do with terrain mechanics, I guess. So yeah, there is nothing much you can do, but you will take a little bit, so just be wary of that. It would be advised to give the person you are boosting a major health potion or a fire protection potion, just as a precautionary reason to go through. Now, here at this point, it's very important that you get this right. So what I'm going to show you here is one second, I will pause the video. So there are two ways to get to the other side here. The first being is to pull the lava spawn, as you see here, Mount Skull from the shore with either a bow or a spell attack. Idealistically, you want a healer to heal you as you swim halfway, which will in turn save you money on popping major healing potions or fire protection potions. However, I'm about to show you a much more cost efficient and speed efficient method. So, as you see here, I distract the lava spawn and I am able just to run straight through the lava if I stick to the wall. Really cool, right? And then what I'm able to do is I'm able to stop off at this little crevice here and recoup so I can eat food, I can bandage, whatever I need to do. I just would like to add though, if you are a tauren, you cannot do this method because your ass is simply too fat to sit down, unfortunately, so you will have to do the island method. Now, as you swim through here, you can get a weak aura, I believe, which will actually assist you through the lava and tell you the correct times to jump, avoiding the fire damage. I would recommend getting this, however, I'm too much of a chad to use this, so I don't use it. So getting through here, there are a few things that you need to understand in going forward. So these three lava elementals here, the one closest to the wall will actually chain pull these three. If the person you are boosting runs along the wall, note guys, you have to run along the wall. You have to stick to it like glue, okay? So this lava spawn here, it ranges from level 53, 4, 5, and 6, depending on the reset. Now, the person running through, if they are below level 60, and this fire spawn is level 56. I think the chance of it, chances of it pulling are 100%. I haven't seen anything to think otherwise. I've done this many, many times, and each time this has pulled, the person I'm boosting has been a non-stealth class and below level 60. So yeah, just keep that in mind. However, I have tested it before where the person is level 59, and I have actually distracted them at a 180 degree angle from this corner, and they are able to run through safely. So if you are a rogue, try to distract. However, if you are a non-stealth class and you do manage to pull, don't worry. I'm going to show you now a reset trick. So let's play this. So let's say, for example, you do pull them. Simply, all you do is run around this corner. You jump onto the ledge. And then you go back into this corner here. And after 15 seconds, the mob will reset. Please note, guys, totems will keep them in aggro. So do drop your totems. Here, remember to set loot to free for all, as you don't want to get halfway through and have your party member the only one who can loot the mob. That would indeed be a time wasting tragedy. Now, I'm going to show you a few tricks here, which are going to save you time and cooldowns. So, you're going to have to kill these red guys. These red guys drop the key, which will in turn allow you to light the fire, which will in turn open the door and then in turn set you up for a Magnus kill. Now, at any given time, there are going to be two to three of these red guys around the room. There's always going to be one red guy in a position like this. Now, what this means is that you can actually kill him without aggroing the rest of the mobs, which will save you a vanish, okay? Which is important because you want your preparation up for Magmus. So as you can see here, the positioning allows me to kill and loot without aggroing any of these guys. However, the second red dwarf that you kill will not be so forgiving as you will be forced to pop a vanish. Now, I would suggest trying to kill one on the outer skirts of the room, simply because Vanish can sometimes bug, so it's much easier to reset them as opposed to having to do it in the center of the room. If you don't know what you're doing here, you can wipe very easily if, it, if the Vanish bugs. Now, I've seen people jump Vanish. I've seen people Vanish on weapon swing timers, but sometimes it just can bug, and I'm not really too sure why, so just be wary of that. I will show you how to reset them now. Okay guys, so here is a visual representation of what it looks like if you pull and you want to reset. So what you're going to do is, you're going to jump up here, okay, 
and then you are going to run into this corner here. Do you see how you are now out of line of sight from the mobs? Yep. You see these ones here? These see you and you, these also see you. This one is shooting you, which means these ones are going to reset, right? But this one is not going to reset because it's in line of sight. These guys will reset because they don't have a ranged attack. However, this one still sees you and it is. So what you simply do is, like I said, you run to the other side, okay? Now you are out of line of sight and eventually they will reset. You see? And you can re-stealth, you can re-eat. Okay, kings and queens, so now I'm going to show you how to approach the other side with safety and with speed and efficiency. So if you are boosting somebody, tell the person you are boosting to stick behind you. Please guys, don't run into the obstacle like this. Don't be a noob, just stick in and keep like this. Even if you need to drop down, like this and jump back up you can do there is no issues so tell the person to follow you and you're basically just going to like take the aggro while the person you are boosting is behind you and just run through now if you are going to solo the keys and the person you are boosting knows what they're doing they can do this on their own with like a health potion or something like that however generally you won't need to use one if you are pro at just sticking to the wall now what you need to do is you need to continue running all the way around until you hit the reset point which is next to the door to Magmus as you will see in a second so like as you see now you're generally going to have enough health to like get you through this no issues so you stick here and then run into here now after about 15 seconds the mob the mobs will reset as you see here and then you can just eat and then wait for the person to finish the keys hope that helps so now you're basically just going to kill the fire guards and light the torches which will open the door to Magnus. As you can see here, the person who I am boosting is assisting the DPS. Guys, don't be afraid to ask the person you are boosting to assist DPS. It makes things so much more quicker and efficient for the both of you. I would recommend doing this. Most of the time, um, people will be nice enough to assist. They will understand that it helps the run yada 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 sometimes they will need to afk if they're working that is completely understandable however of course i am going to kill the bosses solo so don't worry about that it's just that for the trash packs and stuff like that this guy will be assisting as it just makes the run that bit quicker So guys, you have reached Magmus, you are doing amazing, congratulations. Now, for this fight, you will need to pre-pop a greater fire protection potion. You will also need a free action potion up for during the fight. The reason being is because Magmus does an AoE burst fire damage, which does quite a lot of damage. So pre-popping the fire will negate this. Now, it is quite important that you have a free action potion up because Magmus does an close proximity AOE stun which will stun you for six seconds now it is quite necessary to avoid this as it basically results in him damaging you for six seconds and you doing no damage to him for six seconds and it is very detrimental in this fight because it is a DPS race whoever dies first will have to trot along off to the graveyard so for the consumables as you see here I have a flask of the Titans up this is not necessary this is basically me showing you the links that you can go to for increasing your survivability so yeah you don't really need to use this maybe if you are like full green gear i would suggest using a flask of the titans however if you have some stamina then the other consumables will carry you through this now for the damage pots i am using mongoose and giants this is also not necessary but i do like to pop them as i am not cheap and i like to increase the speed times of my boosts but yeah it's completely up to you whether like what damage consumables you use now you can use a stamina food i would suggest using a stamina food however the agility food is like the best one i have really i don't have any stamina food the elixir of fortitude i would recommend getting this as it increases your health by 120 thus increasing your chances of survival now the stamina zanza i would definitely definitely suggest this as a mandatory pot as it basically increases your stamina by 50 which increases your health by 500 this is huge and it's very very cheap to use so yeah let's get into the fight so the best thing to do is pull in with a bow and just run to the back door. You don't need to run in like me and grieve yourself and just like take unnecessary damage. 
This is a really good example of a kill because I actually make a lot of mistakes here, so you can learn from my mistakes. I do have clean kills most of the time, but yeah, this is a, a good kill in terms of learning. So what you want to do is you want to pop your free action potion. I would wait off a little bit for it because I do get stunned. And as you see, it can be quite detrimental. Just pop your evasion, ghostly strike, make sure slice and dice is up, you know, use your offensive cooldowns. And then once your evasion is down, pop preparation and then repop evasion, yada, yada, yada. Just, yeah, use that, go with this rotation. Now you will see, because I pop my free action potion early, I do get stunned. If you do this correctly, you will literally take no damage. Like this is a fight where if everything goes right, you can basically come out of it with 100 HP. But yeah, you will see now I do get stunned. Fiery Burst is being absorbed still by the fire protection potion, which is good. But yeah, this huge sec seven second stun is like, ugh, you do take a lot of damage. So yeah, try and hold off with the free action potion a little bit. So at least until your evasion cooldowns are up, or at least one of them is up. But yeah, we still get the kill with around 45% HP, which is good. And yeah, just follow this rotation and you should be fine. This is basically a solo kill though, guys. So in reality, you're, the person you are boosting will able, be able to assist you with the DPS. So it won't be as bad as this. But yeah, like I said, if you get everything right, then you will literally lose no HP. So for these packs, you're going to always have one elite and the rest non-elites. You're always going to want to sap the elite, which will give you more breathing space in killing the non-elites. Idealistically, the Twilight's Hammer Ambassador wants to die first as it gives you a nasty debuff which increases your magic damage taken. The Senators do holy damage, they do shadow damage, they do fire damage. They also Nova you and run away, so be wary of this. Also, just to add, please, 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 whatever you do, the person you are boosting has to be level 60 to DPS here, because if they are not, they will pull the mobs above. So please, learn from my previous mistakes. So, you want to kill the senator? Guys, try to ask the person you are boosting to assist you with this, as it will help you in terms of speed. And also, as you can see here, we are both DPSing different targets. Don't do this, guys both DPS the same target in unison, just get them down quickly. All right, so here there is an elite to the side here. It does not matter though, you can still pull with a bow. And it will not aggro this elite this is what i found out it will increase your speed time so yeah just take note and, and do it like this but going forward guys what you need to know is when you are pulling these packs whether it's above or it's below the best method is to pull with a bow like this and then run a around the corner like the theme would say and let them come to you just let them come to you because if not they will damage you from range and it just messes the whole thing up so yeah as the run goes on just watch how I'm pulling and copy this method. As you can see, I sat from above and I just run down and around the corner and just let them come to you. This is literally the best method to use. Also guys, I do want to add, it's so important that you line of sight here because like for example, if you don't have Cripple Poison up or you don't have Sprint up to negate the Frost Nova and catch up with your enemy, sometimes they can run right to the back wall near where the Emperor is and it can pull the Emperor, so just be wary of this.
So congratulations guys, you have now made it to the Emperor, in one piece I hope, which indeed does mean that you are now a World of Warcraft Master. So what I'm going to show you here is a reset method, which basically allows you to engage in a one versus one fight versus the princess, which actually makes this boost soloable. Now, this is a method I discovered a while back, something quite naughty in fact, and something I think Blizzard never intended for people to discover. So what's going to happen is you're going to cheap shot the princess and then you're going to run to the back of the room. Now sprint isn't needed here, you can just run, but a free action potion will be needed because when the emperor enrages, he can stun you from range. So you are going to need to avoid this stun if it does happen. So open with a cheap shot and run directly towards the back of the room. Popping a free action potion as you approach the first lamppost as he enrages around this point and is able to hit you with a ranged stun. If he does hit you with a ranged stun, then you're going to need to try and reset with a vanish or jump down. It's usually a GG at this point. So what you need to do here is you need to jump down just before it hits you and then tilt your camera here. Right, so as you see here, you see that the camera is tilted. At this point with the skull, you can see at this point she is now running down the stairs. This is a good indication of when to step out and lock the Emperor in a forward and backwards motion, as you will see here. So as you see now, he's locked in motion, right? So now she catches up to you. This part is very important. So you need to hit her once to engage in combat with her. Now, what you do is you need to vanish, right? As he is lined of sight. So you have to vanish when he cannot see you. If you vanish when he sees you, it's a GG. This, this whole process will not work. So I vanish, I sprint and I reopen. At this point, the Combat has been reset, he runs back to his throne, and it is indeed a GG. At this point, she does some shadow damage, I believe she does a dot, she does a renew, a self-heal. She can be fully CC'd, cheap shot, kidney shot, kicked, just interrupt her, she is like quite, she's just quite an easy one versus one, so you'll have no problems here. So yeah, as you see, the reset process is quite simple. It might take you a few times to get, but yeah, it's just like really sick. Okay guys, so on the Emperor, you're going to need to have a Greater Fire Protection Potion pre-popped. You are also going to need a Free Action Potion or a Major Healing Potion, depending on the situation. See, with Emperor, he is like Magus in a way. He can stun you, but the stun is much shorter. Therefore, you can actually kill him without a Free Action Potion. It's quite situational because if he stuns you, near the start then you can actually use a major healing potion to catch up from the stun after it so it just depends on how you feel at the time however i would recommend a free action potion as avoiding the stun is always good but with the emperor you're going to open with a garrote and then you're going to use your first five combo points on expose armor and then like magmus you're going to make sure that your evasion is up and your ghostly strike is up and then pop your blade for it now what you want to do is, you kind of want to save your preparation evasion, so your second evasion for when he enrages, because when he enrages, that's when he's going to do the most damage. So try and save your evasion for the enrage phase. Now once your defensive cooldowns are fully spent up, he should be quite low at that point, so then what you're going to do is, you're going to drop down and sprint around the corner and then bandage, and then ideally finish him at the top. Now I'm just going to start the fight. So. Garrote, Evasion, Blade Flurry, Expose Armor, so we're just damaging him here. So as you see he enrages and your Evasion and Ghostly Strike is up, so you have max dodge. Now he shrinks back down to normal form. Now watch what I do, I have Evasion up right? I save it for when the second enrage comes, like now, bam, as you see. So it's just about using your defensive cooldowns at the right time. Now I have free action up, so he can't stun me. My evasion is up, my ghostly strike is up, so I have max dodge here. Once those are down, I'm gonna jump down and I'm gonna sprint around the corner. Okay, so we sprint around the corner. And we bandage about here. 
This way you can see him running around, so like you just get a much better positional sense of where he is. Now, as you can see, he's enraged, so you don't really want to engage with him as he is enraged. So try to kite him a little bit until he jumps back down to normal form. See, then you can engage now. What you also can do is you can jump down and you can go around to the other side and just kite him. Hey, heel, kite, heel, and just like cheese it that way. It's, um, it's really easy. So as you can see, I'm basically just waiting. He drops down to normal form and then you can engage in the fight. You really don't want to engage when he's enraged because like his hand of um, his iron folk and proc and yeah, he can just like one shot you. But yeah, it's just basically about kiting him and engaging at the right moments and that's it. So kings and queens, you have now learned to master the Hand of Justice solo boost guide. Congratulations, you absolute legends. You know, it has taken me several months to learn this boost, but it has only taken you guys around 20 minutes, which to me just doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> I'm only joking, but with that being said, I really hope you've enjoyed the video as much as I've enjoyed making it. And if you are interested in seeing more World of Warcraft, PvE, PvP and gold making guides, please consider subscribing to the channel. And also, please smash the like button and leave a comment with your thoughts on the video. But with that being said, I'm Toxie, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Peace.